Welcome. Today we're going to start off by recapping what we learned about magnetic fields at GCSE and if you didn't do GCSE around sort of year 11 level. First of all, what is a magnetic field? I hear you ask. Well, guess what? Here's the answer. Imagine you have a magnetic material. The earth is magnetic or just imagine a lump of iron. This creates a field around it. We talked about fields previously. These are just concepts and ways of explaining um, things in physics so that we can make predictions. This field is in a region of space. So the magnetic field is a region of space around a magnet or magnetic material. And it's where if I put a ma another magnetic material, e.g. a bit of iron there, it would experience a force. So as long as I'm in this field, I know that a bit of iron is going to experience a force. If I get far enough away, that iron may no longer experience a force. We know we've left the Earth's magnetic field. But it actually does go on a very, very long way to infinity. If we look at the bar magnet shown here, you see that this has a magnetic field around it. Now, how do we represent that field? Well, we use field lines. And that's something we learned about when we did electric fields last topic. They're visible to the eye, but we represent them by using these black lines here with arrows to show the direction. We'll talk about that in a minute. You know that shape already, hopefully. So magnetic field lines show you the strength and direction of the magnetic field. And there's a few rules that you've got to stick to, otherwise, one, they're continuous. That means you don't just start and stop. I don't want to see anything like this. No good. Two, they do not overlap. No, no overlapping. Three, where, they're, where the magnetic field is strongest, they are closest together. So that would be stronger than something like that. So they tell you how strong the field is at that region. And their direction is from north to south. A bit like electric fields show the direction of positive charge when moving. This is our definition, which we've come up with. How do we know the shape? Well, we can use something called iron filings. Imagine a bit of parmesan, but it's made of iron. You sprinkle that on, tap the piece of paper, and because the iron is magnetic, it slowly lines up, because it experiences a force, with the magnetic field lines. So you can see that roughly there. You can't tell the direction from this. You need a compass if you're going to do that. We know it's strongest at the pole because there's the most field lines there and weakest further out over there. Other special fields that we know about, if we get two magnets attracting like this, north to south, a small distance apart, we can create a uniform field. A bit like with electric fields when you had two parallel plates. You can see that the field is uniform because they're equally spaced and they are straight and parallel. Now, one of the really, really important stuff of, uh, discoveries in physics was that when current flows in a wire, a magnetic field is created around that wire. You may know that if you try to use your compass underneath an electricity pylon. Not a good idea. It doesn't work. Here you can see a wire with current flowing in this direction. Remember, I is a symbol for current. A magnetic field, which has a symbol B, we'll talk about that um, in a future topic, is circular around this conductor. You can see that it gets weaker as we go further away because the lines are more spaced out. How do we know this direction? Because there is no north or south here, so we can't just use that. Well, we know we love physics, so give me a thumbs up with your right hand, and we'll use something called the right hand grip rule. The thumb represents the current direction, in this case up, and the fingers show you the direction of the magnetic field, in this case going around the wire, around the back, and around this front like that. Now, when we come on to the, um, Fleming's left hand rule and other things in the future, it's quite important to know if the field is coming out towards you or going into the page, because we can't really draw that easily. So we have a notation for that. Over here, you can see that if it's going into the page, we use a cross, and if it's coming out of the page, we use a dot. And a good way to remember that is imagine me now taking an arrow and firing it at you. If it's coming towards you, you're in trouble, but all you're going to see, and you'll think of physics just before it whacks you in the head, is the front of it the pin, which looks a bit like that, if it was coming towards you. So that tells you it's coming out of the page towards you. If you, if you fired an arrow now towards me, revenge, it's going away, I'd duck. And you can see the back of the arrow, which is the cross. So this tells you it's going into the page. Might help, maybe just learn it. Other important magnetic fields you need to know. One of them is this one over here. This here is for a single loop of wire. So if I just get a wire and loop around once, you get a field like this. 
You could use the right hand grip roll to work out the direction. You see this current going up this side at the back there. If you use the right hand grip roll, it tells me it's going round and in through the middle like that. This over here, and you don't need to know this equation, is a solenoid. It's just a coil of wire, so it's lots of these. And you can see if I put loads of these together, you can see how these are going to start streaming out. And we produce this lovely uniform field in the middle over here. Around the outside, it looks a bit like a bar magnet. And here's some other gorgeous pictures for you to look at. Here are some questions. Pause the video, have a go at it. And here are the answers. Hopefully you got those all right, nice and easy. Another quick set there. Pause the video, have a go at it. And here we go, again, nice and easy. There are some other materials that attract to magnets. Iron and steel are just um, some of the main ones, but uh, if you remember, it's mix, nickel, iron, cobalt, steel. Steel only attracts because it has iron in it. It's an alloy. Now, we've talked about magnetic fields. Let's think about now what happens if we have a charged particle moving into a magnetic field. If you've ever seen the Northern Lights, this is all to do with this. You can have a read of that. When a charged particle passes through a magnetic field, it will experience a force at right angles to the direction it's moving at. So if it's moving that way, we can experience force upwards, downwards, that way, all towards you, but it's got to be right angles to the direction it's moving in. And we'll see what that means about parallel magnetic fields in a second. Here we go. Charged particle, magnetic field. These dots, remember, mean like the arrow is coming out towards you. So imagine a uh, North Pole in there, it's going out towards you. The field line is coming out woof, like that. This charged particle is about to be fired into that field. When it's out here, nothing happens. Nice straight line. But when it enters, let's see what happens. Ho, ho, ho. Look at that animation. So you can see that it curves upwards like that. Why? Well, as we said earlier, remember it's going to experience a force at right angles to the direction it's moving. And you might remember that if you have that force towards kind of the center there, it's a centripetal force, it's going to make it go in a curved path. We'll see in a minute you can actually get it to go around in a circle. This worked because the magnetic field was perpendicular to the direction of motion. Direction of motion, magnetic field. They were right angles to each other. If it's parallel, you can see in this case the magnetic field is coming this way towards me, and this is the direction of motion, and you see these two are parallel, you get no force. Straight through it goes. Let's see this in real life. You can set up one of these bad boys here. Basically, it's an electron gun, which is as cool as it sounds, which speeds up these little electrons and fires them around in this um, evacuator. That means, basically, it's a vacuum in here, glass uh, sphere. Out here, you can see some really cool big cores of wire, which create a really nice uniform magnetic field here. So we'll have a magnetic field. We'll have electrons, which are charged particles, moving at right angles to that field. They're going to move up like that, magnetic field is going through like that. So it's going to experience a force. And you can see that actually you can get it to go around in a circle. The green line represents the path the electrons take. And here's some labels to help explain what's going on. But again, you don't need to know this, but it's just a nice example of how it works. And the reason why it glows is because there's a gas that glows when it's hit, when the electrons hit it. The other thing we learned about was Fleming's left-hand rule. And what happens to, say, a conductor, which could be just be a bit of metal, when it's in a magnetic field and it has a current flowing through it. As we already know, when there's a current flowing, we create a magnetic field. So you see I close this circuit, current flows through here, this is a bit of metal that can move, flows through here and down this way. So around here we're going to get magnetic field. Now this magnetic field is going to be inside this other magnetic field, they're going to interact with each other, and that's going to create a force. It's called a catapult field, um, and it creates a force in that conductor. How do we know the direction? We'll look at that in a minute. First of all, remember you need to think about which way the magnetic field is going. If that's north and that's south, then it's going to go like that. Now let's look at Fleming's left-hand rule, and then we'll see which way it goes. Here's a spoiler alert. It's going to move that way, but let's see why it does that. Fleming's left-hand rule is with your left hand. Clues in the name. The thumb is the force, direction of the force, the direction of moving. This is the magnetic um, field direction from north to south, that's your first finger. And the second finger is the current, and remember we use conventional current, so it's from positive to negative. So let's go back now and apply that to this one here. There's your positive part, there's your negative part, so you can see the conventional current's drawn on correctly. And it's going down that way, basically it's coming out of the page towards you. This is the north pole, this was the south pole as we saw earlier, so the magnetic field's going up. 
So round we go, left hand. Current's coming out basically towards you. I mean, imagine you're looking at it from this angle, it's coming out of the page. And then it feels going up, or if you want to angle it, it's more like that, but same idea. And you can see therefore that the force is going to be to the left, which is what we found. So that's how you can find the direction using those ideas. And off it goes. Well, I knew that, so you didn't need to see that. How can we increase the force? Go on, think for yourself. I'm sure you got it right. Increase the current, or you could increase the strength of the magnetic field. If you wanted to reverse the direction of the force, you could either reverse the current or reverse the direction of the magnetic field. And you can see that from Fleming's left hand rule. The current's going that way, and I reverse it. You can see how the thumb flips around, the force is reversed. If I change both these symbols at the same time, no good because the force will end up being in the original, same as the original direction. Have a go with your hand, and you'll see that. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful.